local communities. Currently, none are being served. Government has committed to annual targets of 8,000 hectares of afforestation, but under the current Fianna Fáil Minister and a Green Party Minister of State, afforestation rates are less than a third of those targets, and the crisis is getting worse. Since my election to this House, I have to say I have been astounded by the ignorance and cynicism of those ministers on this issue. That ignorance and cynicism was best exemplified when the Minister of State, um, Minister Hackett, following her meeting with Kilcha last week, said, this is a hugely exciting time for Irish forestry. It appears once again that the Green Party aren't only completely out of touch with local communities, but they are also pursuing a course that will undermine our ability to reach our climate action targets. I have rarely seen a proposal from a state agency that has garnered such widespread opposition as the proposed Kilcha joint venture with Gresham House. Environmentalists, farmers, the forestry sector and local communities are all united in their calls for the deal to be stopped. Upon the official announcement of the proposed joint venture, governments sought to present themselves as some form of observers. Michal Martin said he wanted alternatives to be explored rather than selling land to a British investment fund. Leo Varadkar said that this wasn't the government's preferred model. The implication was that government knew nothing about Kilcha's intentions that they were caught on the hop. But ministers McConlog and Hackett know that that's not the case. As far back as March 2021, Minister of State Hackett was informed by Kilcha of plans to use such a private vehicle to acquire lands. And even if ministers didn't fully understand the importance of such a strategy at that point, in November last year, during a dull debate, I and other members of the opposition referenced Gresham House specifically and raised concerns about its implications. And if ministers thought we were exaggerating, then the hearing of the Oireachtas Agriculture Committee with Kielce in December last surely removed all doubt that Kielce were ready to embark on a deal that would see the whole-scale purchase of thousands of hectares of Irish farmland by a British investment fund and that the Irish taxpayer would be expected to subsidise this land grab to the tune of tens of millions of euro. But throughout all of this, the ministers cynically sat on their hands. It was only after the public outcry that ministers sat down with Kilcha to discuss their plans, but not to tell them to stop. Minister McConlogue said he was engaging with Kilcha to discuss how we can support them to do their work. This venture isn't about climate. It's not even about tree planting. For Gresham House, this venture is simply about corporate profit. The funds delivered through the venture will simply drive up the cost of agriculture land that farmers could and would plant themselves if government delivered a workable regulatory framework. Indeed, in the past, we have seen Ireland actually reach its afforestation targets of over 8,000 hectares a year. Who planted those trees? Farmers did because they were part of the programme. Rather than disenfranchising and alienating farmers and local communities further through this deal, government should go back to a programme that actually worst works. The Ministers for Agriculture and Public Expenditure are the shareholders on behalf of the Irish people of Culture. And they can and they should instruct Kulcha to immediately stall this plan. And Sinn Féin's motion gives ministers a dull mandate to do just that. But can Corla, in perhaps the most cynical move at all, of all, the government doesn't oppose tonight's motion, even though they have no intention of adhering to it. But make no mistake, should this motion pass, then minister, you have an obligation to enact it. And just for the record, I will state again what it directs you to do. The motion calls on you, Minister, and on Government to set in place an ambitious forestry licensing target for 2023 and all subsequent years, and to commit to meeting licensing targets for both Kielce and non Kielce applicants. To publish the new forestry strategy as a matter of urgency, but to ensure that the new strategy prioritises afforestation undertaken by local communities, by farmers and landowners, and public bo bodies above the investment, um, investment by management ventures such as Gresham House. And most importantly at all, it instructs you to instruct Kielce to immediately halt their proposed joint venture with Gresham House. In the interests of climate action, in the interests of our economy and in the interests of our rural communities, Minister, it's time to do the right thing. Pass this motion tonight, absolutely, but enact it. Deputy Doherty. I want to thank my colleague uh, Deputy Carthy for introducing this motion on behalf of Sinn Féin. And one of the greatest areas for potential for tackling 
climate change and biodiversity losses through protecting and restoring our forests. And a good forestry strategy minister can deliver for our environment, can deliver for local communities, and can even deliver for our economy. And part of this could be and should be encouraging farmers and farming communities to diversify, a community-centred, inclusive approach to management of our lands, a just transition was said to be an important pillar of the Government's Climate Action Plan, in which afforestation plays an important role. But we now know that the Government's plan are for large tracts of land not to be put to the use by local and farming communities, but instead diverted to a British investment fund, Gresham House. That is scandalous, and it is not a just transition. Kilcha, a state-owned body, uh, will source the land will plant and manage the trees, while international investors and shareholders will siphon the financial reward. That land could otherwise have been the basis of income and of livelihood for farming and rural communities, but now will be just another asset in the investment portfolio of Gresham House, courtesy of this Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Green government. And the risk of land price inflation will follow this deal. The risk is very real with some estimating that it could push up land prices by as much as 33% right up into 80%. And no wonder the Irish Wildlife Trust has described this deal as a scandal. They have said it is bad for rural communities, and that it is. Funding that could be invested into rural communities is going instead into the pockets of a British investment firm. So I ask the Minister for Agriculture and the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform to stop this deal now on behalf of rural communities and on behalf of Irish agriculture. We need to significantly increase the planting of forestry to meet our climate obligations and protect our biodiversity, and that requires engagement and buy-in from local and rural communities. So the government must then address the issues that have led to farming, farmers withdrawing from this crucial sector. What you need to do is publish a new forestry strategy, implement the recommendations of the McKinnon and subsequent reports, and again, I call on the Dáil not only to support this motion, but to actually act on it. Thank you. Uh, Minister, the, the, the proposal here for to allow Keelshire for to use an investment company for to buy up land and to plant vast quantities of farmland across the country is, I think, another uh, surge to the right that this government is going on. We have a whole lot of issues in farming across the country. We have serious problems in our sheep sector, we have serious problems in our suckler cow sector. I don't see any investment funds coming in to save them. But yet the only part, or one of the few parts of, of agriculture where we do have investment funds is the part of it which is tax-free and which is highly subsidised by the state, which is forestry. And what we're doing is we're creating a situation where multinational corporations and multinational investors will make vast profits on the back of taxpayers' money. And that's what this is really about. It has very little got to do with you know, our targets or in order to, to ensure that we have you know, our climate action targets met or indeed our forestation targets met for to produce timber. It's about creating a system where you can move public money into the hands of private investors. And it is absolutely scandalous that this government would consider that that is an appropriate thing to do. In part of the country where I come from, we have very large areas of forestry. In County Leitrim, we probably have surpassed 20% of the available land which is there, which people are, are using. And we cannot, and many farmers cannot compete at the moment where they want to buy a piece of land beside them. They find that forestry companies come in and are buying that land. And now we have the situation where you're going to have a state-funded agency, Kilcha, which is going to do the same thing, backed up by a foreign investment company called Gresham House from England. You know, it, it is just preposterous that you would consider that this is appropriate. And I cannot understand for the life of me how you met with Kitcha last week and came out of that meeting and said that you were going to encourage and help them in this project. But where is the sense in this? Have you no idea where the vast majority of the people rest on this issue? I have spoken to farmers, I have spoken to people in the forestry industry. In fact, I heard uh, Mary, uh, uh, Marina Conway from the Western Farmers Co-op on the radio last week talking about this very issue. Everybody that's involved in the industry is against it, and yet you're continuing to go down this road. I think, you know, it, it simply strikes me that it's not really about the forestry, it's not really about the climate change objectives, it's about corporate profit. And I don't know who or where is pulling the strings, but whoever is doing it, those strings need to be cut. And if, if there's any courage left in this government, they need to stand up 
for the ordinary people of the country and ensure that if taxpayers' money is going to be used for the benefit of anyone, it's been used for the benefit of the people of this country. Cormaga. If this government dealt with the forestry licensing crisis, which has been ongoing for some time now, and treated existing forestry owners, including those with ash dieback, fairly, more farmers and landowners would plant forestry. Targets set by government would actually be met, and we would not be in a situation where there is now an attempt to sell off rural communities. Quilch's plans will take over thousands of hectares of farmland in rural communities to line the pockets of a foreign investment fund. This will be of zero benefit to our rural communities. Such a deal will also see this investment fund competing with locals, including young farmers, when it comes to purchasing land. And locals will not have a hope as if farmers weren't under enough pressure already. And we've seen this, we see it already, it happens in housing. We already know that forestry contributes over 2.3 billion euro annually to our economy. And in rural communities, that is the local economy. It's the local <laughs> shop, it's the butcher, it's the co-op. That won't be where this money will go under this proposed deal. And there should not be one red cent of forestry premiums or grants paid to investment funds. This is taxpayers' money. Rural proofing has been spoken about in this House now for decades. My party introduced legislation on this back in 2016, and I reintroduced that legislation with colleagues in 2021. Government have decided to produce their own mechanism, and we are still waiting. And it is an issue like this is precisely why we need a rural proofing mechanism to put a stop to this attitude of indifference to the impact that policy decisions will have on those of us that live in rural communities. Forestry is already a contentious issue in some rural communities, and that's usually down to poor engagement or lack of consultation. And that is another reason why we need a forestry strategy. Lastly, I would just say that it is important that the government do not underestimate the level of anger that is out there in relation to this issue. This is a bad deal, and it is a bad deal that should be stopped. Uh, Since the Quilt uh, Gresham House arrangement first emerged, it became clear that more was known by the department than was being let on at the time. While the Project Woodland Working Group were convening, the arrangements with Gresham House were being put in place. Indeed, Minister Hackett was aware of this as far back as March 2021, and she and the Minister appeared before the Agriculture Committee on several occasions and totally disrespected us by not informing us or the working group in relation to this. So effectively, the stakeholder group that was being consulted on the way forward for the industry were being kept in the dark about an arrangement that will fundamentally affect their livelihoods. I've been told this by one such stakeholder who said to me, and I quote, this makes affairs of wood project woodland. I was also told by a forester that he developed suspicions about such an arrangement when landowners began telling him about being contacted by fund representatives interested in buying them out. Because of the way the forestry service has been mismanaged, the department has no chance of achieving its afforestation target through conventional means. And this is the way you want to get it done. By sidelining our foresters, contracting out the work to private investment fund and handing over public money, when all they have in mind is profiteering, not what is in our interest. The IFA have expressed this concern that a large proportion of new forestry programme funding will be redirected from farmers and rural communities and instead paid out to investors, and they're absolutely right, Minister. You're using Quilt to try and keep this arrangement to redirect public funds at arm's length from the department. Would you expect to benefit from it nonetheless, while farmers take the hit? But you're fooling no one. One forester told me of their fears that they will be unable to compete for land given the deep pockets of funds. He referred me to the 2022 UK Forest Market Report that outlines the surge in land prices experienced in Scotland, where incidentally funds are quite active. You are selling out foresters and you are selling out rural communities. And what is also concerning to me is a reply to the PQ in which you told me while Quilta is providing management and land acquisition services to the company concerned, it may procure these services other than from Quilta. So who else is it the door being open for here? Can you elaborate on that, please? And how many more Gresham houses have no obligations to Ireland or the biodiversity targets are waiting in the wings? 
Instead of masking your failings by selling out this sector, I demand that you direct Quilted to halt this proposal and instead fulfil your brief by immediately publishing the new forestry strategy, clearing the remaining forestry licence backlog and continuing to process new licences and implementing the McKinnon and the other reports which are gathered on dust on the Department of uh, Margaret. Uh, the forestry strategy in order has always been geared in the wrong direction. And a, key, a, key, a core weakness has been the failure to look after our national uh, parks and native woodlands, overgrazing by deer, sheep, and the infestation of invasive species like rhododendrons are the usual and not the unusual in many of our ancient uh, woodlands. While the, the forestry industry plays an important role in the economy, our forestry strategy cannot avoid the environmental impact of placing huge swathes of sika spruce on our hillsides. Our lack of respect of our native biodiversity is truly astonishing. The corollary was reckoned to be at risk of extinction in less than a decade. In fact, a quarter of all bird species in Ireland are disappearing. And anyone that walks in a spruce plantation will tell you the utter silence as you walk through the trees, the orange carpet of fallen pine leaves, the only sight among uh, bare trunks. No mosses on the ground, no plants, no birds. There are ecological death zones, and there's, mo there's more biodiversity and life on a motorway embankment. The volunteers and young people who take part in this stepping stone for us in my own constituency will tell you why this is a flawed strategy. Biodiversity is the key, and buy-in from communities is, is vital. The government's target is of the annual forestation of 8,000 hectares, when the, um, when the Green Party were in opposition, they advocated a rate of 15,000 hectares. So no, it, not that it matters that the, because this government has failed to exceed a quarter of their own pathetic targets. Um, we're planting the lowest level of forestry in any time over the last uh, 80 years. And the idea that we can increase our forest cover from 11 to 18 per cent by 2046 is laughable considering our poor performance and lack of ambition. So the proposed joint venture between Quilter and Gresham House has been, resulted in increased um, government tar tar targets for forestation. There has also been a complete lack of public consultation and engagement regarding the potential negative consequence of large purchase of, uh, of lands rising from the venture on a, a social and economic and environment basis. So th this is a time when we must be hyper vigilant about what trees we plant and where we plant them. The government must publish the new forestry strategy as a matter of uh, urgency. That strategy must uh, prioritise a forestation undertaken by local communities, farmers, landowners and public bodies. We need to see green corridors through our cities and our villages. badly needed for the type of investment. Um, the state through Quilter should not be incentivising or underwriting these kind of investments for vulture funds at the expense of family farm incomes or viability. And there are also legitimate concerns the investment by such vulture funds will inflate the cost of land just as it has done in other sectors like housing. So local farmers and rural communities could be priced out just as many renters have been priced out of living in the areas where they grew up. Minister, this is a bad deal, one which facilita facilitates the sale of thousands of hectares of Irish land to a British vulture fund. And the government are once again doing their all too familiar innocent bystander routine. Well, it's remarkable, ministers, that when you go through Quilch's annual reports, it makes constant reference to the need for shareholder approval when it comes to big, to big decisions, just like this one. But where, who are its shareholders? Where are they hiding? Well, the shareholders sit right across the government, uh, on the government benches right across this chamber, and they're ministers McConlogue and Donoghue. And it's the former minister who appoints the board and sets out their terms of office in writing. And it's the board's responsibilities include the approval of contracts over a value of 1.5 million, the approval of the disposal of assets over 2 million, and the managing of investments of over 3 million. Well, minister, the current deal establishes a fund for 200 million. So I'd like to hear the minister confirm to us that he vests his confidence in the board and the approval of this decision. The board which the minister appointed, a board which the minister also has the power to remove, because it seems to me that this is a bad deal whatever way you look at it. And it's very curious to me that a public-spirited board would even want to enter into such a thing. 
This it comes from a government who only recently produced a white paper about how it wants to actually support Indigenous Irish businesses. So what will Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil's bright idea be next? Will it be selling off our rivers and our streams? Because, Ministers, you need to put a stop to this. The people are against us, and the people are against it for valid, clear reasons. So you need to put a stop to it. And if, you're not willing to, if the board won't listen to you, well, then you need to tell the board what's what. Uh, here, look, um, thanks very much. Um, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion this evening. Uh, I thank Deputy Carty for bringing it forward. I'd, at the outset, like to remind the Minister that the motion that she's criticising, she's actually supporting here tonight. Um, classic, classic of this government uh, approach, and I've seen it very many times myself. Um, We've seen yeah, similar in relation to, to, to climate. Um, let's talk about the, the government's emissions reductions targets. How many of them have you have, have you met? Zero, zero. And 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 we've and we've read and we've read at the and we've read in the in the reports at the, at the weekend. You'll exhaust you'll exhaust the carbon budget. Whatever target you have, you'll sub, you'll surpass it. Yeah, you'll you'll surpass it. Every climate target you set, you have missed. You ha, you have missed. Yeah, so, and we've set them out and spelled them out for you, and we're debating them here tonight, Charlie. Yes. We're debating yes. them here tonight, yes. and we've debated you them have before. To, you have to have a policy to, to debate it, Deputy Rourke. Thanks. Um, Deputy O'Rourke yeah, to address through the chair. Thank you. So, so to be very clear, this is a bad deal for Ireland, and it's spelled out. It's a bad deal for Ireland because it will increase the price of land, and more importantly, it reflects a complete lack of vision on behalf of this government. No strategy. Forget about strategy. Absolute lack of vision. There's an opportunity here to bring communities with us. And what are you doing instead? You're isolating them. You're alienating them. And it's completely unacceptable. But it's no surprise at all, given you have a, a, a coalition of Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, and their ideological partners in the Green Party. Communities been isolated, farmers been isolated, the price of land been driven up. Um, there is a real opportunity in forestry here, and you don't have to imagine what, where communities are, because you've had a, a citizens' assembly on biodiversity. Your own department has consulted with communities. They've spelled it out in, their pub, in, in public attitudes on the survey on forestry. Communities want to play their part. They want forestry in urban and rural areas. They want it to be alive. They want a richness in terms of biodiversity. Instead, what are Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and the Green Party doing? They're selling it off for corporate profit. And shame on you all. The seal minister, the two ministers between Gresham House and Quilche, is not in short of a land grab. And this time it's not English landlords uh, with an army in front of them that's clearing off the peasants. But you facilitating the transfer of hundreds of millions of euros to a British company to snap up large tracts of land, Irish land, and to put it out of reach of rural communities. And see how this goes down in Camerus and Clunas Lee Minister, if you think people are behind you on this. The failure to meet targets to increase deforestation has been caused by the failure of government to put a proper framework in place and to sort out problems in the sector. The amount of land being planted has collapsed, and has collapsed dramatically from 8,314 hectares in 2010 to just 2,244 last year. We're way off target on climate and timber. Huge delays continue in obtaining felon licences, and you know that. There's some waiting up to two years. And we must do better for commercial reasons and supply of commercial timber, and for environmental reasons, and to meet our climate targets, we need to plant a minimum of 800 hectares per annum. We need to increase the variety of trees planted. Quilche is a publicly owned company. The ministers and the government, are, on our behalf, are the sole shareholders. The idea that the owners have no say, and either do hands off the wheel or be asleep at the wheel, is absolutely ludicrous and can't stop this. It's a ludicrous suggestion. This government and the deal with Gresham House deal follows a pattern of moves by Conservative governments who use investment funds to control social housing, health services, to run the lottery, and to try it with water. That's what we're lining up for next. And now forestry. This is straight out of the playbook of Margaret Thatcher and the British Tories. 
And you should be ashamed of yourself as a Green, as a Green, I can't say a Green TD, but as a Green Junior Minister going along with this right-wing move. People in rural Ireland and in the Midlands value semi-state companies. Alongside this, farmers want to be involved in sustainable and efficient farming programmes that deliver our needs in commercial timber and meet our climate targets. Minister, you, you must stop this grand land grab and you must implement immediately the, the, the recommendations of the McKinnon report and a new forestry strategy and start clearing the backlog of licences for forestry in the system. Deputy Thomas Gould. <coughs> Minister, once again, Fianna Gael showed their true colours. They are the party of privatisation, they are political allies, or the rich investment funds, and the only reason they care about the environment is if they can make a dollar or a buck or a euro on it. I am deeply concerned, and so are many of my constituents. I have recently dealt with Quilcher in regards to a forest near Watergrass Hill that has been sold to a private company. This company will turn this forest into an agricultural composting. The locals who walk this forest with their families and their children and who explore it are very disappointed. Now, Quilcher told me that there are non-native trees in this forest and it's gone past this carbon lifespan and will begin to do damage to the soil. And they told me that they will be replanting trees to replace the ones that are filled, but not in my constituency. We are talking about forests that my constituents want to be part, be part of being lost to both them and future generations. And when we look at rewilding projects, we see huge impacts that they have. Many of these projects are in their infancy, but what we can see is the clear potential. Ministers, what you're doing now is what Fianna Gael tried to do when they tried to privatise water. What Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil did when they tried to privatise housing. People can't buy houses now because vulture funds and cuckoo funds are coming in buying up whole developments of apartments and houses for profit. And that's only a year watch. And if you ever wanted to know, if there's people watching here tonight, and they want to know what the difference is. Fianna Gael, supported by Fianna Fáil and the Greens, will sell the future of the Irish people to investment funds. Why? It doesn't make any economic sense. Like, the people, this belongs to the Irish people, and you're selling it, you're giving it away. The same way you've done, with, tried to do with water, and the same way you've done with housing. And can I say this, and I will leave it at this, shame on the Green Party. The Green Party is supposed to stand up for ordinary people. And by supporting Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, they're selling out their true supporters, their true members, and I'll ask the Minister to reconsider her party's position on this. Deputy, Deputy Daly, please. Ministers, over the past week or so, dozens of people have been contacting my office uh, about this joint venture with Gresham House, about the subsidising and about the collaboration with a cor and a corporate takeover by the UK Equity Fund. Many people who contacted said, discussed the, the sell-off of telecoms and housing and bins, the attempted sell-off of water, the sale of the National Lottery and now uh, our forestry. They saw some of the people had been abroad, they lived in Germany, they lived in England, and they saw what had happened over there, the sell-off to vulture funds. A hill farmer from a hill farmer's organisation, he spoke ab about how were, were hill farmers who were not wealthy people expected to compete with this type, of, uh, uh, this type of investment fund. All over Kerry, people talk about the Sitka spruce and the damage that it has done. In Nocknagoshal and Brosna, the rivers are in effect poisoned up there. The brown trout that used to be there, it, biodiversity is gone. Lickeen Wood and Glauntanasig also. And one man from Glencar told me that it's similar to the way that the Cara River is now blocked off to locals. You can't even swim in it without people saying that it has it taken over into private hands. But the widespread concern about all the people who contacted was, and there was a coalition of farmers, forestry people and environmentalists, they wanted a forestry strategy that delivers for the environment, that delivers for local communities and delivers for the economy. And this subsidised, grubby, scheme, this grubby joint venture will deliver none of these. The venture appears 
entirely towards circumventing the rules which prohibit Quilta from receiving, receiving the subsidies for afforestation and partnering with a company that will be motivated primarily by profit. And that is not good for the said same group, farmers groups, forestry people and environmentalists. So the government should be up front, and it's not too late for them to be up front about it. They should try and halt this joint venture and publish their new forestry strategy as soon as possible. Gormila Magath. Uh, um, Minister, the farmers will make the assessment as to whether you're listening to them or not or what you're, you're doing for them. I want to thank my colleague, um, Matt Carthy, for bringing this to the floor of the House. Minister, you're not listening. People in rural Ireland and in Mayo are completely perplexed and alarmed by what you're trying to do here by the facilitation of this disastrous anti-rural initiative. I really would ask you, I'm very alarmed there when you say there's nothing we can do about this, that the deal is already done with Gresham House. I really, really am. I think it's a major mistake on both of your behalves and, and, uh, and on the, the governments we have. And it really reminds me of when the Fine Gael finance minister told us that we needed the vulture funds. We needed the vulture funds to be here because we couldn't build our own houses. And now you're telling us that we need the investment funds here because we cannot grow our own trees. And we have thousands of farmers who are willing and able um, to do that all over the country. We fought long and hard enough and made too many sacrifices to be in control of our own lands. And now you're telling us that up to 123,000 acres uh, of that land is going to be given over to investment funds and that somehow they are coming in here to help us out with our climate challenges and with our climate change initiatives. They're here to make money. At least be honest with the farmers and the communities around this country. They're here to make money and they're driven by profit, uh, profit maximisation and, and by greed. At least be straight with people. The target is 8,000 hectares per year, and indeed that's a very modest target. We actually reached those levels in 2010, and since then the system has been grinding to a halt. And in the last two years, we've barely broken 2,000 hectares. We need Kulcha to have the ability to contribute and to deliver on our environmental targets. The British investment company Gresham House has seen an opportunity here not only to invest in the land and the forestry sector but also to access the public funding in it for the grant aid intended to compensate farmers for the low income that comes from non-productive land uh, until new trees, uh, planted trees are mature. They see an opportunity to buy up large swathes of land and to benefit from public money of up to €1,100 per hectare over 20 years. And farmers and local community are being abandoned and they rightly feel let down uh, by this government. Uh, putting... Sorry, I want to just give over to my colleague. Right, okay, thanks. Um, um, I welcome the motion and I commend my, my party and constituency colleague Matt Carthy for his work on this issue and for bringing this motion to the Dáil here today which aims to put a halt to Kitcha's proposed joint venture with Gresham House and I'm just dismayed Minister by your, your answer that the deal has been done. I mean this deal will see millions of euro of public funds used to subsidise the purchase of huge swathes of Irish land by a British investment company. Uh, the deal was not transparent and it's rightly been criticised by a broad cross-section of interested parties and it's despite what you're saying it must and should still be stopped. Um, the government owned culture. They, they must instruct it to stop the deal with Gresham House. I mean, Ireland needs to plan significant levels of forestry to meet our climate obligations, and it cannot be done without engagement and buy-in from local communities and farmers. I mean, forestry policy should deliver for communities and local economies and the environment. However, governments, and particularly this government, have overseen the disengagement of those stakeholders from forestry, and this proposal will make a bad situation worse. I mean, over the last decade, the purchase of land by large corporates and the blanket planting and subsequent clear felling of citrus spruce and the, the lack of genuine consultation has meant that many communities, particularly in West Cavan and in County Leitrim, have become hostile to forestry. So in November it emerged that Kilcha were planning to enter into a joint venture with British Investment Fund Grisham House and indeed the Green Party Minister of State responsible for forestry knew as far back as March 2021 of Kilcha's proposed approach. I mean, the primary purpose of this investment is that it would allow Kilcha access to state aid via forestry premiums once again, which it had previously lost due to a state aid ruling by the European Court of Justice. 
is the wrong approach and it would discourage farmers and local uh, communities from engaging in forestry programmes. The Climate Action Plan suggests we need to plant 8,000 hectares of new forestry each year, and some suggest it should be even higher. I mean, this simply won't happen if farmers aren't central to the forestry programmes, and the Kilcher deal with Gresham House will drive them even further away. So instead, the government should focus on addressing the problems that have caused farmers to flee the sector and immediately publish the new forestry strategy clear the remaining forestry licensing backlog, continue to process new license applications within a reasonable time frame on a consistent basis for both Kilcha and non kilcha applicants and implement the McKinnon and subsequent reports. Thank you. The ministers tonight tell us a narrative that a deal engaged by culture with a British investment fund um, is essentially something they can do nothing about. They say they can't instruct um, Kielce to stop the deal, even though they don't like it, or to use their term, it's not their preferred option. That's not true. It, the suggestion that the government, as the owners of Kielce, cannot tell that company to disengage from a multi-million euro contract would be laughable if it wasn't so serious. Then to go further to suggest that while they can't instruct Kielce in respect of the Gresham House deal, but they have told them to examine other options for the future is, I have to say, cynicism of the highest order. If the government can't stop the Gresham House deal, then how on earth do you expect us to believe that Kulcha will then adhere to their directions on anything else in the future? Both ministers actually know the truth. Not only were government aware of Kilcha's plans, those plans were devised in collusion with the government. A small text in a parliamentary question response that I received from you today, Minister, but you didn't repeat here tonight but I'll put it into the record of the doll. It states, and it's the first time I was aware of this, a shareholder letter of execution issued to Kilcha on the 2nd of June 2022, which included a direction to Kilcha to, and this is a quote, develop initiatives to support and realise the planting of such forests to a meaningful scale in the years ahead, whether as part of their core business or as participants in a subsidiary or enter partnership enterprise. It is clear that you were aware of what Kielce were planning to do and that that letter of expectation was the go-ahead, the mandate that culture needed in order to yeah. approach Gresham House and make the deal. This isn't something you weren't aware of. You were absolutely aware of it throughout the process, but you kept this house, you kept the Agriculture Committee, you kept the sector, you kept farmers of Ireland completely in the dark and then you yeah. come in before us and you tell us there's nothing we can do, the deal is already made. It is absolute cynicism. It is the reason we have a crisis in forestry. It is the reason why we're failing to reach our targets. What we have now is a deal that will see a venture owned by a British investment fund purchase thousands of hectares of Irish land. Most of that land, as the minister herself uses in defence of it, is actually already forested. Only three and a half out of 12,000 hectares is actually new afforestation. So where does that fit into any climate action plan? This will see um, prices inflated beyond the reach of most family farmers. This deal will see Irish taxpayers' money, tens of millions of it, being used to subsidise the actual purchase of land by a British investment co company. And you've cited this notion, this laughable figure, oh, it's only 1% of the overall target. Imagine having faced the challenges that you're facing on your first 1%. What hope? Do we have that this government has any prospect of reaching the further 99% that's actually required in order for us to reach our climate action targets? Now, anybody looking at this, anybody looking at how these investment funds and think that this is stopping at 12,000 hectares needs to have their head examined. Gresham House own, at the moment, across Britain, 140,000 hectares of afforestation land one, worth 1.8 billion euro, to suggest that they would even contemplate coming into the Irish market for what is, in the grand scheme of their operations, pittance, is again laughable and it doesn't stack up to it. So the questions that you still haven't answered, because there's been lots of rhetoric around state aid, and you, your department, as you acknowledged last Thursday at a briefing, have actually, for most of the past year, been in discussions with the European Commissions around state aid rules. So have you put the question to them at even once, what do you need to do to ensure that culture can draw down state aid rules and not have to rely on a British investment firm? My belief is that the question wasn't even put. Have you looked at your afforestation programme to see whether or not you can actually prevent 
millions of euro actually being siphoned out of the country, whether you can actually devise a forestry programme that goes to farmers, to landowners, local communities and public bodies, but not to British-held um, investment companies. That would be a solution. We know how to get to the afforestation rates that we need because we've done it before. Way after 2004, when Kilcha um, were impacted by the state aid rules, in 2010, we matched the 8,000 hectares of um, land um, being afforested. Who did it? It was the farmers of Ireland. They did it. We were on the right trajectory, but due to incompetence primarily, bureaucracy and lack of vision on the part of Thank your you, department, Deputy. we have seen it get worse and worse every year I'm since, to the now. point Thank where you. we are now planting the lowest rates of afforestation since the Second World Thank War. You. I know why. It's because we have incompetent <laughs> ministers, an incompetent forestry section, and, inf and, and, inco Marty. and now we have the cynicism Time of you to... coming in here today at night and speaking against Please, the motion Deputy. that you intend to vote in favour of it. That's cynicism of the highest order, yeah, and that's the reason why communities, farmers and Deputy. landowners right across the country have disengaged from the forestry programme. Here, here. That concludes our rather heated debate on motion regarding forestry. The question now is that the motion be agreed to. The not, agreed. not agreed. Not agreed. You're, you're, you're not agreeing to the motion? No. All right. The Chuck the Third Heaven of Harris can now operate this talk. Are you in favour of your own motion? You are? Yeah. Good. The Chakti Atta in the Those who are against? Neil. The rural independents are against. So, Estolim will encash Richie. I believe the question is carried insofar as a vote has been called. It's deferred until the weekly voting block tomorrow evening.